Welcome back everyone and it's time to go balls deep! Today we are going to cover one of the strongest pro heroes in America, Christopher Skyline. And guess what? His hero name is Playboy Hero, Captain Celebrity. Yeah guys, I didn't make that shit up. The dude's name is Captain Celebrity and he's America's top tier hero within the My Hero Academia spin-off series, My Hero Academia Vigilante. Now before you guys mention in the comments and tell me, I Team is vigilante cannon. Why should I care? Shut up, bitch. <laughs> I don't know why I do that voice when I'm trying to represent you guys. But yeah, I've been quite savage lately in the videos. I'm sorry. I just want to thank you guys for the support. It's all banter. The support from India, the support from the Philippines especially has been immense. Keep telling your friends out there. Subscribe to Anime Bulls Deep. Hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate it, man. Who is Adil Adil Yusuf? Who is Adil Yusuf? Fuck the Adil Yusuf, okay? And fuck the the scenario and fuck Big Papa. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Well, to answer the question, yes, Vigilante is canon. Horikoshi, the creator of the original manga, always makes references to Vigilante. He stated in an interview that Vigilante is a prequel to the story that we see in the anime, and Vigilante's manga exists in the same universe. So, let's begin with Christopher Skyline's backstory and powers so that we are all on the same page to understand his greatest story. I want to clarify, even though Captain Celebrity's appearance does look a lot like All Might or gives off a similar vibe, in reality, this dude is nothing like All Might. Instead, Christopher's character is someone who is still trying to find the true meaning of what it means to be a hero, a symbol of peace and justice. Starting as a pro hero in the western world, Christopher's experience with fame and clout turned him into the very idea of a broken hero that Stain was referring to when he spoke to Deku and the whole world. Even his hero name, Captain Celebrity, showcases the epitome of Stain's gripe with the hero society. Stain believes that those who work as heroes to collect income or do it for selfish reasons are unworthy of being called the name, and only All Might is a true hero. Due to his strong ideology, he took it upon himself to become the hero killer Stain, to stain his own hands of blood to purge fake heroes and change the current society. So basically, Christopher Skyline would essentially be on his list. Christopher has the quirk called flight. Now even though a name like that would usually have a simple explanation of being able to fly, but his quirk flight is more complicated than you might think. Flight not only gives Captain Celebrity the ability to fly, but also allows him to utilize a personal force field of telekinetic energy. In many ways, his abilities are similar to and probably inspired by Superboy from the DC Universe, as the tactile telekinesis used by him is more or less the same as his quirk. Tactile telekinesis is like regular telekinesis, but it only works on things that you touch. Now, even though it may seem limited, as it does not allow the user to affect things that are far apart, if used in the right way, it can be quite overpowered. For example, controlling objects within your vicinity, you are able to crush them or tear them apart to mimic super strength. He also has an ability called aerodynamic barrier, that uses the telekinetic energy surrounding him that can be used to protect him from the cold, heat, explosions, and other physical harm. This field of protection can be extended to cover other people, but it gets thinner the more people he protects with it, which is one of the weaknesses of his quirk that villains such as Number 6 notice as they plan to kill him. Christopher also uses this power on his own body, where the energy boosts his physical might to superhuman level, giving him enough strength to topple a Godzilla-sized villain with the force of his punches, and with the assistance of his quirk even lift large ships in chapter 14. Now, to put it into perspective, a large ship of that size weighs at least 200,000 tons. How is this guy not at All Might's level yet or even world renowned at this point? I'm, I'm confused. I'm confused right now, G. Well, we all are. <laughs> I'm confused too. So let's explain his whole story. This is the story before Christopher came to Japan. He had a life in America. Since a young age, Christopher had always been a very popular person with others, especially with girls. He was a stereotypical jock that you have seen in TV shows or a protagonist with a horror. Christopher Skyline knew the worth of his own ability, along with the attention it brought to him. This led him 
to the decision to become a hero. Now, it's not specifically stated, but it's highly insinuated in the manga that Christopher's main objective of becoming a hero was for selfish reasons, and this path brought him to the things he desired most, which was women, wealth, and fame. However, everything changed during his pursuit to become a hero. This is because a woman named Pamela entered his life. She was unlike other women he knew. She showed no interest in him and even showed a sense of annoyance. However, instantly, Pamela caught Christopher Skyline's attention and made him feel the need to gain her recognition, especially after Captain Celebrity realized that everything he has done so far is because he wants everyone to like him and have attention. So to encourage Pamela, he arranges to meet with her but within the first encounter there are many conflicts already. Ultimately, in the end, they do fall in love with each other and after becoming a professional hero, he asks Pamela to marry him and she accepted. So judging from what you just heard, you probably know that the seeds of failure of their marriage were already set. The conflicts were a cause of concern that would come into fruition of Christopher's downfall. It was all good times in the beginning, but she began to get mad at him more frequently. And this is because of his hero job wasn't going anywhere and because of his tendencies always sleeping with other women. Christopher was used to being in the limelight and had poor core reasons in the first place as to why he wanted to be a hero. Essentially, what my man tried to do, this guy started to smash all the other female fans that he had, even the people he rescued. Bitches were looking at his 666 basically and the stacks of paper he was making, but why didn't they think to themselves, wait, this is a married man. But nah, they wanted that big PP gang and on top of that, Christopher was a playboy so he thought nothing could go wrong, I'm gonna smash all these chicks. Bruh. In the end, Captain Celebrity gets caught and ends up in a scandal. This becomes national news and everyone starts speaking about him negatively in the press. He was a cheater and karma comes back to him because people he thought were close friends turned out to be snakes who were just leeching off his success in the end. This flirtatious attitude also led to several lawsuits to the point that his ex-wife Pamela has pretty much made a business with it getting rich and clout from him. This problem seems mostly down to his obsession with his alpha male image and desire for attention. God damn, even villains he detained began filing lawsuits against him. Could this man's life get any worse? Yes! Because due to this, he's been in a lot of trouble including with the women he used to smash on the side who also began filing lawsuits against him. Left, right and center, wherever he looked, people hated him. His whole image and life starts crumbling apart as his personality and actions catch up to him. His ideals of what it means to be a hero are completely wrong in in comparison to Deku who wants to be selfless. Deku wants to save the smiles on those in danger by being the next symbol of peace, right? Whilst Captain Celebrity on the other hand, he just wanted women, fame and money, which is superficial and selfish, the opposite of what it means to be a hero. Because of these multiple scandals, Captain Celebrity earned the nickname Captain Troublemaker and he had to quit being a hero in America, so he tries to make a fresh start in Japan. The first time we meet Captain Celebrity is in chapter 14 of the Vigilante manga. The story starts off with the typical convenience store robbery and motorcycle chase with the main character Koichi Hamaware chasing this petty criminal down the highway. The thief uses his long leg quirk and yeets Koichi in the face causing him to swerve into a truck's path. The one to save Koichi was none other than Captain Celebrity who also managed to apprehend the thief before he could get away. He states, Ha 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 ha, you are courageous lad, but leave the hero work to the pros. The captain boasted this unaware of this unknown hero's name, Goichi thanked him and asked, who are you? The captain seems somewhat offended due to his arrogant personality trait that I described earlier in the video and he then proceeds to sign his autograph on Koichi's limited edition All Might hoodie, much to Koichi's distaste. But it is thinking to himself, bruh, this is my All Might hoodie. I wanted All Might's signature, not yours. Oh wait, that reminds me. Look at my hoodie. Oh shit. Look at that Deku merch, bruh. Did you know you can get 15% off with the code Deku? Look at all of these guys wearing it. Thank you to all of you that support us on this channel, making us financially stable so we can produce these weekly My Hero Academia videos for you. Anyway, for the merch, the link will be in the description and pinned comment. Basically, Captain Celebrity's ego gets hurt in regards to All Might and he then states, So what? My autograph is worth a lot more. Goichi then with a confused look on 
his face, he responds by saying, The value of an object is decided by its owner. <laughs> The captain responds to question what the deal with All Might was, claiming that he was lacking in elegance and was all brawn and no brains. Unlike himself of course, like this dude doesn't even have a cheer squad like him, how can All Might compare to such a chad like him right? That's what he's thinking. He doesn't even bother waiting for Koichi's reply thinking he's a boss man, but in the end we're all thinking, oh brother this guy stinks! Back in Koichi's apartment, we begin to see news headlines of the captain's quote-unquote past heroic acts, where he prevented a cruise ship accident from two years ago. The manga does this to give this character a chance in Koichi's point of view, so that he can try and understand him better. Maybe he got the worst impression of the captain, but on the inside, he can be a good person. The next day, the city is under attack by a Godzilla-like kaiju. No, <laughs> I'm not kidding. It looks like Godzilla, but due to international copyright laws, it's not. Still, we should run like it is Godzilla! Though it isn't. Ah! Goichi is helping evacuate the civilians. A little girl cries for help to rescue someone called Masahiko, who was stuck in the building. Captain Celebrity shows up and Goichi informs him about the situation. But the captain, he decides to wait until the media arrives on the scene. And since the police have not made any requests, he is not obligated to act, so he does nothing. This is the exact opposite of Horikoshi's ideal hero. Do you think Deku would sit and wait for the cameras just to show up so he can rub it in Bakugo's face? Triggered by this, Koichi goes off on his own to rescue Masahiko himself. Shortly after, Captain Celebrity is then informed that the police have requested his dispatch and the media were on its way, so he proceeds to make a move. In typical flashy fashion, Captain Celebrity flies in and show Yukins the Godzilla right in the nose, dazing the monster and eagerly saves a girl and then delivers a final blow, knocking it out. Consequently, the KO'd Godzilla starts falling and collides with a building, which so happens to be the very building Koichi went in to save Masahiko, who happens to be a pet dog by the way. As the journalists and film crew capture the fight, Captain Celebrity noticed Koichi trying to avoid the falling debris from the collapsing building and dives in to save him. Fueling his ego for defeating the monster and for saving Koichi and girls at the same time whilst on camera, Captain Celebrity then gives Koichi another autograph making sure the media capture every moment much to Koichi spiked. Disappointed that he had to be saved again by this dude, Goichi thanks Christopher Skyland for the rescue to which he states saving pets is outside of our expertise and that Goichi deserves all the credit for that. However, he makes an arrogant request not to jump in playing hero around him because he has a lame get up and he's lame, basically calling him trash, referring to his All Might hoodie, claiming that an All Might hoodie himself appearing in the same frame on TV will actually ruin his image. Hey yo, what the fuck? So just from this single chapter, it's already quite telling of what kind of person Captain Celebrity is. He is the quintessential douchebag celebrity, a narcissist who only cares about his appearance on the media and how people view him and he always tries to get in the limelight with pseudo selfless acts. Moving on with the story, let's talk about Captain Celebrity's relation with Mokoto. Um, how am I going to pronounce this? <laughs> oh my god, Sukiyochi? Sukochi. Sukuachi. Yes, this woman. She is the sister of Naomasa Tsukiyachi, the police detective who is closely related to All Might himself. One of the few individual All Might entrusted with the secrets behind One for All. Going back to Makoto, to give a TLDR description of her, she is a university student who is quite intelligent, independent and studious and is very goal orientated. Basically a waifu, right? As a kid, her curiosity often led her asking people questions. At first, her parents thought it was just curiosity, but we Come to find out her quirk is a true finding quirk called polygraph, which just like real life polygraphs, monitors a person's physical and psychological signals to detect if they are lying or not. Just like her brother, she is also proficient at detective work with the help of her quirk. So how does Makoto relate to Captain Celebrity, you ask? Well, let's start with how they met. At the start of chapter 15, we find ourselves in another collapsing building. Thanks to the Godzilla incident from the previous chapter, due to the instability, the police can't go in and
and find anyone still stuck in the building. We then transition to Koichi using his slide and glide quirk to maneuver his way into the building and finds a man and woman stuck inside both injured. Captain Celebrity appears and offers to take the lady leaving the much heftier man to Koichi. Suddenly a chunk of concrete from the building began to fall above Koichi but the captain manages to stop it and saves him once again. The captain then begins to pose in front of the news reporters and cameras with the injured lady in one hand with the rubble he caught in the other hand whilst Koichi carries the man to safety without being noticed. As the demolition squad arrives to take down the building, Captain Celebrity decided to spice things up bringing in his own cheerleading squad. Makoto was part of Captain Celebrity's cheerleading group and due to his playboy womanizing tendency, he invited her to a date to flirt with her. But when Makoto told him that she became friends with his ex-wife and she is in contact with her, all attempts to seduce her are banded by him. According to Makoto, Captain Celebrity's ex-wife stated that if he ever starts going back to his old ways whilst abroad in Japan, she will assume he has not learnt his lesson and will use it as a ground to file another lawsuit against him. And this is pretty much how Makoto went from being one of Captain Celebrity's cheerleaders to general manager and boss. He pretty much becomes terrified of her. Makoto aimed to change Captain Celebrity's very core and improve his conduct and behaviour as a hero as he will improve his public image by jam packing him with a busy schedule. While still fearing her, Captain Celebrity grows to appreciate Makoto's effort to reform him and considers her a friend. After all of these events and weeks go by, Captain Celebrity continues his role as a hero by defeating villains under the supervision of his new boss Makoto. However, during one of these eventful days, he ends up rescuing Koichi once again from a giant mantis villain named Kamayan. Captain Celebrity is getting quite annoyed and he informs Koichi that they should proceed to the penthouse and talk about how justice should be handled going forward. They discuss Koichi's battles with villains as he causes too much trouble for the captain with the extra workload that he has to take on whenever he is involved due to not being strong enough and needing to be saved. He goes on to say that with his busy schedule for Makoto, the penthouse they are in is the only place he can escape to have some time to relax. This is when Koichi receives a phone call from his manager asking for his location, where she suddenly appears in front of them and asks for the captain to leave since they need to fulfill their busy schedule. At this point of the story, the manga is trying to build up an understanding of Christopher Skyline's character to the reader. It's setting the seeds of how and why he changes later on to have a more righteous attitude, but at the same time making him an understandable person. Although Captain Celebrity has good intentions and genuinely doesn't mean to harm Koichi's feelings or crush his dreams of wanting to be a hero, he still has to deal with too many expectations and workload. This causes him stress, therefore influencing him to act in a distasteful manner where he seems like a douchebag. The manga does this fantastically because the next scene in chapter 30 portrays his ego and superficial state of life by showing the next day of him shooting a commercial with Tensei Ida. In the commercial shoot, the captain notices himself looking less stunning in one frame so he asks for a reshoot. I guess this is portraying the reality of today on how celebrities have to uphold a certain perception to the public and are brainwashed to the point that they don't feel like they can be themselves or flawed like we all humans are. Celebrities are put on this pedestal or role where they are criticized on everything so they can't tarnish their image. I mean bruh even ordinary people do this. Have you seen the shit on Instagram or TikTok lately? For like an hour because it's just so like Pathetic that like she just comes in and like almost passes like she's so close to pass. <laughs> Anyway, during this commercial shoot, the heroes are suddenly attacked by someone disguised as one of the crew members. They use a remote control truck to crash so that Bat Villain is released from captivity. The heroes chase after him, but he manages to fly away. During this chase, Bat Villain grabs our protagonist Koichi as he was searching for him. However, Captain Celebrity, with the use of his quirk that was described earlier, easily catches up and knocks him out with one blow. He then catches Koichi before he falls to his death and is then congratulated 
congratulated by everyone at the concert for being so amazing. The next arc which features Captain Celebrity is called Sky Egg Bombing ranging from chapter 36 to 58. Captain Celebrity has been in Japan for a while succeeding in reforming his image. Thus Makoto decides to plan a farewell party at the Tokyo Sky Egg. Basically a time skip occurs of several months where the Captain Celebrity is now enjoying Christmas with Makoto and the others. After the celebrations are done Makoto informs the captain that he can return to the United States because his hero license will be reinstated. Christopher then asks about the lawsuit where she states that most of these cases end up in entrapment of some kind and she also informs him that he is going to be a father. Captain Celebrity was actually shocked at the news because he didn't have any idea of his ex-wife Pamela being pregnant at all. After he learnt this news he promised to stop chasing other women or being promiscuous. He vows that he will become someone that his child could respect and the manga tries to portray his humility that the celebrity is slowly reforming into a man that we can back just like the public in the manga. Anyway after the party another crisis occurs to the little sisters of Saint Leela's academy their taxi is snatched away by some sort of flying creature. This is when Captain Celebrity goes out in pursuit but before he can do anything to help number six explodes the creature. Number six is a member of the villain factory and the primary antagonist of My Hero Academia Vigilante's manga. Now in chapter 55 it's stated that the main objective of this criminal organization is that the pinnacle of their experiments will be the creation of a being that can rival all might in power. So with the use of this tech and anime bullshit science of course he exploded the creature. However Captain Celebrity uses aerodynamic barrier to protect the girls from being harmed but in turn because he chose to protect them instead of himself he ends up with several wounds. Now remember how I stated earlier how Christopher Skyline told Goichi to stay out of the fights because it causes him a hassle and in the advertisement he seemed quite self-centered with a vain personality. The manga uses this fight to showcase his humility and selflessness giving him extra character development on how he has become a changed man after going through trials and tribulations within his private life that spiraled out of control due to his ugly traits from before. Anyway in chapter 46 number 6 manages to figure out the captain's weak point of his quirk and decides to leave to prepare another attack that would kill him. After weeks of organizing and preparing for the event the farewell party is celebrated along with the attendance of many Japanese heroes. Nothing really happens in the event until Christopher decides to show the public a picture with his wife Pamela and their newborn child. However Pamela gets upset with Christopher and tells her that he showed the picture of them to thousands of people and she hangs up the call being upset. Because of this awkward situation Makoto decides to move on to the next act of the party whilst Christopher tries to fix the problem he just caused with his wife. Whilst he is apologizing to his wife the Tokyo Sky Egg is attacked by five bombers sent by number six to kill Captain Celebrity. <laughs> Like, like bruh this guy is not having a good day his wife hangs up on him and then this dude is trying to kill him <laughs> On top of this, three of the bombers use self-destruct to distract the captain and seriously damage the tower and it is super effective because Christopher is left holding the building up on his arms helpless to save thousands of people who are under the collapsing building. The two bombers who didn't self-destruct, one of them goes to attack Captain Celebrity and is specifically designed to defeat him. They have six arms and possess the ability to use punches that explode and regenerate lost limbs. This is reminiscent of the Nomu four years later in the timeline of My Hero Academia where a Nomu was created by Shigaraki and the Doctor for the sole purpose to defeat All Might all the way back in the USJ arc. The enemy attacks the captain with immense tenacity but despite the beating he has received Celebrity is still holding the building displaying his overwhelming power and will to protect everyone. Right as Captain Celebrity looks like he is reaching his limit Goichi appears and and uses his scrappy thrust style to protect the captain. This alleviates the destruction celebrity is facing from all those explosive punches from the bomber. Goichi stalls for long enough for the other heroes to come as reinforcements. He told him before to not involve himself in the battles but that same selfless person with their acts of different ideals saved his life. So a massive lesson is learnt to Christopher to think about what is truly important to him. In the end Captain Celebrity is 
is willing to sacrifice his life to save Goichi. As the bombers are being taken care of by the other heroes, Captain Celebrity asks for Koichi a favor. He asks him to tell his wife and son that their husband and daddy is a great hero. As he is totally beaten down, Chris falls down to the ground as he is thinking about as if he did something heroic and that his wife should be proud of him as he's about to die. All of this disappears as Goichi unconsciously jumps to save him just like Deku did with Bakugo. Goichi asks Christopher Skyline to use his flight but the captain is too exhausted to do it. With this situation in hand, he grabs onto Goichi and makes a last effort to activate his barrier ability which covers Goichi to protect him from the fall. Other heroes try to save them but number 6 is annoyed by a hero interfering with his plan so he orders the final bomber to self destruct in a giant explosion which causes the Tokyo Sky Egg to fall down. This act shows Christopher's development even more as when he is holding down the building to save the people and risks his life, a part of him had- <laughs> my, my voice just broke, I bet you guys are going to comment about that. But anyway, a part of him had done it so that he can seem heroic to his family as evident by his request to Koichi to tell him how great of a hero he is when he sacrifices himself. Now at this moment, when Koichi and Christopher are falling down, he doesn't have the spotlight on him anymore and nor does he think about being heroic as he is too exhausted to think about it while he collapsed. His body acts on his own to shield Koichi and protect him. This is what a hero is in My Hero Academia. We have seen this many Many time with Deku from the beginning where the body acts before you think in order to save someone. Coming back to the Tokyo Sky Egg falling down on everyone, guess who arrives? All Might is there to save the day! All Might saves everyone because he is fucking All Might. And even the celebrity and Koichi are falling down, he saves them too. He then congratulates Christopher Skyline on doing a great job and also signs Koichi's hoodie that he's been asking for and hoping for for ages. A week or so passes after the bombing and we see Christopher in the hospital recovering from his injuries. Everyone is in the hospital room including Koichi, Kozuho, Pamela, Makoto, all of them right? And we find out that even though All Might was the one to save the day in the end, Many pro heroes thank the heroic acts of Captain Celebrity for preventing a great tragedy which would have killed thousands of people. As this is all going on, Pamela rushes into the hospital room and starts hating Captain Celebrity, calling him an idiot for what he did at the farewell event but she is happy to see him alive. She cares for him deeply and he did not want him to die of course. There is another time skip of two weeks and we are at the international airport. Everyone is there to say goodbye to Captain Celebrity and his family who are about to go back to the US. Some reporters interview him and Celebrity says that he learned a lot in Japan and is thankful to everyone and everything but especially to Makoto for being such a great manager and a second person who is a personal hero of Christopher Skyline. All the goodbyes are said and done and that's the last time we see them as they board the plane. Alright guys, that's the complete story of the number one supposed hero of the USA, a top ranked hero. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to smash the notification bell because we cover My Hero Academia on a weekly basis. Join the Twitch, the Reddit, the Discord, the Twitter, the Instagram, whatever you may be. If you want to shout out or be featured in the future, Check us out. See you next time.